Hi there! In today's video, I would like to show you my latest project, Shortrocity, which is an AI YouTube short generator. So let me first demo how this works and then we can take a quick look at the code. Now, I have three videos coming up on this project where I actually built this from scratch, but I know not everyone wants to see the actual process of building these projects. And also, I can't wait to share this project because it's pretty cool. So basically, what we can do is we can get some source material based on which we want to create the YouTube short, and we can save it into a file, and then pass that file into this main.py script. And then it will create the YouTube short for us. So let me actually take some news article. Here we have something about Elon Musk claiming advertisers are trying to blackmail him. Let's just copy this article and save it into a file. So I will just create here a new file and let's call this musk.txt and let's paste this in here. Let's then run main.py and let's pass in musk.txt. And we are now generating the script for this YouTube short with ChatGPT. And then we are creating the narration for the short using the 11 Labs API. And then we are creating images for the short with the DALI 3 API. And finally, we are combining all of these into an actual video. And the video is ready, so let's take a look. Extremely popular tech magnate during a conference in New York fiercely rebuked advertisers who suspended their campaigns on the social media platform he owns. Elon Musk, currently the owner of X, formerly known as Twitter, derided the advertiser's boycott making it clear he would not be coerced by any form of advertising blackmail. Major advertisers like Disney and Apple had withdrawn their campaigns following the mogul's highly disputed and controversial posts. Such posts led not only to the suspension of adverts, but also prompted a number of high-profile users to abandon the network. Despite his contentious posts and the subsequent backlash, Musk continues to maintain a massive global following and boldly presses on with his technological initiatives. Yet under the fierce, unyielding exterior, the visionary expresses his fear over the potential dangers AI technology may pose to mankind. And there you have it, a completely AI-generated YouTube short. And it will actually even loop, because I made it so that in the end, it will fade back to the first image. Now, not all of the images were perfect, and you might have noticed that the actual transcript that you see here is not quite synced with the actual narration. So there are still some issues to fix. But let's try another news article. So here I have another article about Sam Altman and Elon Musk. Apparently they have some sort of feud. So let's copy this article, um, or not. So apparently we have to pay something, so let's go to the next one. So here we have just the OpenAI blog, and we have these two announcements. OpenAI announces leadership transition and Sam Altman returns as CEO. So let's actually copy these and let's again create a new file and let's call this altman.txt and we just paste in the whole thing here and this one as well. And let's save this and let's run our main.py again but this time let's use altman.txt and let's take a look at this one. The board of OpenAI announced a significant leadership transition on November 17, 2023. The company's chief technology officer, Mira Muradi, was appointed interim CEO as Sam Altman departed. The board embarked on identifying a permanent successor, emphasizing their commitment to ensuring artificial general intelligence benefits humanity. Twelve days later, a new announcement rocked the AI world. Sam Altman was reinstated as CEO. Muradi returned to her CTO position. Back together, Altman, Marathi, and the board look forward to building beneficial AGI and strengthening OpenAI's corporate governance. And again, if I may say so myself, I think this was a pretty good YouTube short. Now, I saw that we had some question marks in a part of the transcript. I tried to fix that in my code by replacing those non-ASCII characters, but apparently we got some other character that I am not replacing because I'm using Python's CV2 library to create the video, and that doesn't support non-ASCII characters in the default font. Anyway, let's keep making some shorts. Here we have an article about the word of the year in 2023, which is Riz. 
So let's actually copy again this article and let's put it into a file. And let's create a short from riz.txt. And let's take a look at this one. Riz. Oxford University Press names it the word of the year, 2023, defining it as internet slang for romantic appeal or charm. The term is thought to be a shortened form of the word charisma and is widely used online, particularly among Generation Z. Asked about his own riz, actor Tom Holland humorously remarks, I have no riz whatsoever. I have limited riz. Contrasting last year's word goblin mode, a term for self-indulgent laziness during the pandemic, riz possibly speaks to the emerging mood of confidence. Selected by language experts, the shortlisted words represent the linguistic zeitgeist. This year... It's all about the Riz. Interestingly, artificial intelligence was named the word of 2023 by Collins Dictionary, a truly contrasting lexical universe. And once again, I think that was a quite entertaining YouTube short. Let's keep going. Here we have a scientific article about electrical brain implants may help patients with severe brain injuries. Let's take a look at what this looks like in short form. Electrical brain implants have shown promising results in the fight against severe brain injuries. After deep brain stimulation, they showed improvement in cognitive functions. Through the stimulation of the thalamus, researchers were able to help patients regain some of their lost mental functionality. Nicholas Schiff and his team from Weill Cornell Medical College in New York City reported these groundbreaking findings. More than 5 million people in the United States live with the effects of moderate to severe traumatic brain injuries. Researchers believe that thalamic stimulation could transform cognitive impairment treatment for these people. Again, very cool. Now, of course, you don't have to necessarily use a news article or someone else's content to create these. So I actually create it if I open from old slash stuff slash demo. So I actually created a description for a short about this project. So if I use this as the source material, then this is the short that we get. A revolutionary AI tool known as Shortrocity has made its debut. It lets users craft YouTube shorts using the prowess of the ChatGPT API and Eleven Labs' text-to-speech capabilities. The Python-written tool generates high-definition videos with perfectly synchronized audio and text transcripts. The creator behind this marvel? None other than unconventional coding on YouTube. And there you have it. You can easily create a YouTube short based on your own source material. So let's actually take a look at the code a little bit. Now, as I said, I do have three videos coming up on this that are all probably more than an hour long of me actually building this thing. But just as a quick overview, we have this main.py. So basically what we do here is we create a chat completion to GPT-4. Now you can use GPT-3.5 Turbo, but GPT-4 works better, obviously. So basically, we send this very long system message, basically saying that you are a YouTube short narration generator, and also that it has to create descriptions of images for DALI 3. And I had to add all of this stuff so that it will not use words in the image descriptions that are not allowed in the OpenAI API. Because, for example, you can't use celebrity or politician names in the prompts because you can't create images of celebrities. And then I just describe this format in which it should respond. Now, the reason why I picked this format is if you just say you are a YouTube short narration generator, then it wants to create this kind of content. So I wanted to let it do its thing because just the response from the one sentence system message was pretty good. So I didn't want to use like JSON format because usually when you use a JSON format or function calling or something like this, then it affects what ChatGPT generates. So I went with this and it works just fine. And then we send the user message, which just says, create a YouTube short narration based on the following source material. And then we just slap the source material here. And then we parse the source material over here. So basically, this extracts into a JSON format or into a Python dictionary the image descriptions and the narrations from the ChatGPT response. And then we just create the narration with our narration module. So this actually creates audio files 
from each of the sentences in the narration. So basically, I forgot to say that these are always one sentence. So we have an image description, and we have a sentence of narration, and another image description, and another sentence. So for every sentence, we create an image. And then, of course, we create the images, and then finally, we create the narrations. So basically, in narration.create, we just loop through all of the narrations, and we take only the text elements from there. And then we either use the OpenAI text-to-speech or 11 Labs. I'm using 11 Labs because the voices are a lot better than OpenAI. And in our images create from data, we again loop through all of the elements in the data. So we have the type of image and we have the type of text in the data we pass in here. So basically we just generate all of the images with DALI 3 API. And this is really the simple part of this project. But then we actually had to generate the video with Python, which I had never done before. So I had to figure out how to do this. And I used ChatGPT to do it. But basically what we do in this video.create is we use the CV2 library of Python to create a video of a certain size. So in this case, 180 times 920. And then we get all of the images that we have created in the previous step and we loop through all of them and then we fade between the images. So basically we take image one, which is the current index of the loop. And then if we still have a next image, then image two will be the next image. And if we don't have a next image, then we will use the first image as the next image into which we are fading. And we resize the images because the images from DALI 3 don't quite fit into this size. And then we get the duration of the narration for that image. Because remember, for every image, we have a sentence of narration. So we calculate the duration of the narration audio for that sentence. And then we just do some math here. And we first show the image for the duration of the narration. And we subtract from that the time we want to fade between images. And then here we do the actual fading. And that basically creates the slideshow you see in the background. And then we have this add a narration to video. So what this one does is it takes the input video, which in this case is the slideshow we generated. And again, we initialize this CV2 video writer and we initialize an empty audio segment using PyDub. And then we loop through all of the narrations again and we calculate the duration and how many frames should we have in this narration. And we add to the full narration which is this empty thing we initialized up here, we add to it the current narration audio so that in the end we will have the full narration that we can then save into a file. So we kind of concatenate all those files together. And to make the kind of syncing of the audio to the transcript, we calculate the amount of characters in the narration sentence and then we divide the duration of the narration by the character count. So this is how many milliseconds we should show each character. And then we split the narration by space, so we get all the words in the narration. And then we just loop through all of those and recalculate how many milliseconds this word should be shown based on the milliseconds per character. And it works pretty well. And then we just write the word on top of the original video. So I have this write text function which initializes the font and all these colors and the font style. And then we calculate the position for the text so that we can actually center it. And then we draw the text two times, in fact, because we want to have a border, but you can't create a border directly with CV2. So we just draw it in black first, and then we draw on top of that with white. So then we get a border. And what else do we have? Basically, here we are just adding the rest of the frames in case for some reason, our math didn't quite work out so that we actually wrote every single frame of the narration. And here we are doing a similar thing, but we are now looping through all the frames of the original video so that we will actually go to the end of the video, even though the narration stops before that. You really need to watch the videos where I build this to understand what is going on here. Anyway, we save the full narration into narration.mp3 so these are all the sentences put together in one mp3 file. And finally, we use ffmpeg 
to combine the audio and the video into one file. And that's it. So if you want to see the video where I actually built this from scratch, then make sure to subscribe and you won't miss that video or three videos in fact. And if you want to try this out, then you can go to my GitHub page, which I will link in the description and you can try it out yourself. So let's end this video with one more short. Here we have an article about mice passing the mirror test. Are they truly self-aware? And in fact, they have an AI generated image in this article. So let's copy this thing, just control A and paste it in here. And let's call this mice.text and let's run it. In scientific revelations, mice have demonstrated self-recognition-like behavior in mirror tests, challenging the long-held belief that self-awareness is exclusive to humans and certain larger-brained mammals. Delving deeper, scientists identified specific neurons in the mouse's hippocampus that played a vital role in this self-recognition behavior, potentially suggesting a link between social experience and self-perception. But mice aren't the only ones. This elusive self-recognition ability has also been found in species from Asian elephants to dolphins, orcas, roosters, and even fish. In health news, a rise in infections caused by the bacterium Mycoplasma pneumoniae, previously known for causing mild respiratory symptoms, has sparked concerns as it has led to an unexpected surge in pneumonia cases in children. The situation echoes previous pandemic scene with social media images depicting crowded hospital waiting rooms filled with children receiving treatment. This serves as a reminder of the importance of global collaboration, ongoing research, public awareness, and robust healthcare systems in confronting these challenges. Okay, so since I copied the whole content of the page, it actually got some other articles and it used those in the short. Now, this also demonstrates one other problem that I have with this project, which is that we are now over one minute, so we can't actually post this as a YouTube short. So that's something to improve in the future. But this is the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then leave me a like and a comment down below and make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.